Let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Taylor Tote by Mormy Now. It's me, hi. I'm the maker, it's me. So within this pattern, there are a total of four different options. Um, you can combine them because there's two exterior and two interior options. So I've created little coloring pages for the two exterior styles. So you can kind of plan out what fabric you want where. So I thought that was kind of fun. And then we have um, part of the pattern is suggestions on how you can make it. So just to go over the exterior style options. This one features webbing handles that are overlaid on top of a pocket and it's a completely full main panel versus this one which are sectioned pieces sewn together and then this is just one big piece so hopefully that makes sense um, so there are instructions as well as illustrations of how to put it all together um, and then there are two interior options one is just a zipper pocket and a slip pocket and then the other one is a completely divided center so these are the three that i have made so far this is my original that i've been carrying around for quite some time and then we have the two that are more closely based off of this pattern this one is exterior option one that is all vinyl with your slip pockets and then your webbing handles interior option one with that cargo pocket zipper pocket and recessed zipper panel closure how do you get twisted so for this one the only interfacings i used were so fuse plus and decaville heavy and i absolutely love the way it turned out and then this one is the same interfacing options with the paneled front pocket option top zipper closure and then this one has the completely divided center piece so for this next one that I'm going to make and cut out in this video, I'm going to add foam to the center divider, I think. But I use Theratex to line this, which is like a really lightweight nylon, essentially. Um, it's from Fabric Therapy, and I really enjoyed the feel of it. It's a very waterproof fabric. Um, and then I just use some glitter vinyls from my website. So I'm really excited to dig in to this one today. I think we're gonna make exterior option one with interior option two, which is that completely divided center pocket. So later on in the pattern, there are the cut charts within the pattern. And you can pick exterior style one or two and then interior style one or two so I'm gonna be doing exterior style one interior style two and then within there there is um, pattern piece letters as well as the correlating pattern pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out pattern pieces getting everything ready to go and then we will start cutting out our tailor tote all right I've gotten a little further along in taping and cutting these together so I figured we could chat while I'm doing that. Within the cut chart there are the pieces that are squares within the pattern so I've given the cut size on the cut sheet but not on the pattern pieces themselves. Um, so any pieces that you see that are just squares you do not need those. Within the pattern, there should be information on what pages to print that are not squares, but I've also tried to keep them together based on which style that you are creating. There are also separate interfacing pieces so that this is domestic 
as domestic friendly as possible. I do think this is a really fun one for panels because you could, if you're making exterior style one with just the handles, you could completely omit that front pocket and um, just feature a very large print along that bottom. You could even make it so that the handles are attached like the exterior style two and just have that bottom lower panel completely open. Um, I think I've said it before, but the hardest thing for me to do when designing patterns is stick to the original plan because I'm so used to making changes within patterns, that kind of a thing, that I'm like, oh, well, what about this? What about this? Because this was actually designed initially to be a very simple, straightforward, quick sew tote. And um, yeah, as you can see, that's not really the case. We went a little further than that. So I'm going to keep all of my square pieces in a pile just in case I decide I need them. Because you could also use them to label your pattern pieces. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my friends for testing this bag. They all did such an amazing job. Pattern testing is hard, but I think it's even harder with someone who is as scatterbrained as I am and like working on 40 million things, but yeah, they nailed it. So as I'm cutting out my pattern pieces, I like to cut into the pattern piece at an angle so that I have a little bit of support to join the pattern pieces together with. Also keep in mind that the cut instructions on the pattern piece are not necessarily what you're going to be following for each style, exterior or interior, but they're kind of like a quick glance for if you're using that pattern piece, what you're going to be needing. You could choose to um, interface with foam as well. And for most of the foam pieces, you'll want to fuse it onto your pattern piece. Um, because we're not going to be able to baste through it since it's out of those seam allowances. So if you want your foam cut to the same size as your exterior piece, you can, but your seam allowances are going to get really bulky, so keep that in mind. And for the pattern pieces, you want to line up the numbers, or not the numbers, but the letters. You don't want to overlap them. Yes. Section side panel, side panel. Okay. So I think that's all the pattern pieces that I needed. So for exterior, one, I'm going to need to cut two lower side panel exteriors, but for interior style two, I don't use this side panel piece. I'm going to be using my divider side panel pieces. So that's why those say lining, etc. So 
I understand if that's confusing and I apologize, but I didn't want the pieces to just say nothing. You know what I mean? But as you can see, those interfacing pieces line up perfectly so that you've got it out of your seam allowances and it's much easier to sew. Now we get to pick what we're gonna make it out of. Uh, most of these I've used a mid-weight to accessory weight vinyl for, um, especially up here on the top panel. You don't want this to get super bulky and be hard to sew through. It's kind of thinking it might be fun to do something that's professional looking. Um, so I'm gonna be using this Theratex from Fabric Therapy for the lining. I'm gonna use just one solid color for the exterior. And I think I'm gonna use this webbing for the handles. So, like I said, I'm doing exterior style one. So I'm gonna start by going down to the bottom and it says for my handles, I need to cut 42 inches of webbing times two. So fingers crossed, I've got enough. <laughs> Not that. Okay, good. I have more. Ooh, I also have it in black. Do I have enough black? I do like the green, though. I like the green. It's very monochromatic. Okay. Does anybody else do this when they're cutting and they're just like, ooh, but what about this? What about this? I mean, probably. But a lot of times that's why I just try to, like, stick with it. I'm like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm just, I gotta stick to this. Um, yeah. And this kind of webbing has a tendency to fray, but what's good about using it for this pattern is that none of my pieces are going to be affected. Like, they'll all be very secure. So. There are my handles. You can also choose to cut your um, crossbody strap connectors out of webbing or out of vinyl. So I've got scraps here. I'll go ahead and cut those out. So these need to be three inches long. And then I'll be using one and a half inch hardware for this then. Within the pattern it says you could use one inch or one and a half inch, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then for the crossbody strap, I need 56 inches, which is probably just this whole piece left. So, perfect. There's my straps. And then there's my scraps. Let's go ahead and kind of sort our pieces out for what we're gonna need for the interior. So I know that my divider side panel lining pieces, obviously, just lining. So I'll go ahead and set those aside for now. And then I have my divider center pocket. All of that is gonna go over there. So now these are my exterior pieces that I actually need to have the pattern piece for. And I'm just gonna kind of read through to double check. There's cut size for those, and then lower main panel, and lower main panel interfacing. Uh, lower side panel, yep, and interfacing. So that's it, I just need those four pattern pieces for this exterior. And then we can go ahead and start with our cut sizes, or you could start with your pattern pieces, totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of interface, not interface, <laughs> put some tape over this cut chart so that I know as I'm going through what I have and what I need. So I've already cut out my webbing handles and my crossbody strap. And then down below I have also included the zipper tape that you need to cut and the hardware you need. So, um... I guess that kind of varies 
for the lining option too, so I'll make a note to change those. Cut chart. It will be done by the time you're seeing this video. I'm still in the testing phase. It is currently August something or other. Slipped away in a moment of time. All right. I've got my connector pieces. Let's let's do this. Grabbing my rulers that I will need for the exterior. All right, so I'm going to go from the top down. Um, exterior and contrast would normally vary, but I'm just going to be using the same fabric for all of it. So I'm going to need four contrast pieces that are 14 by 2. You also have some wiggle room on your exterior pieces because of your interfacing. Um, your seam allowance is like half an inch. So if you're using fabric that you don't have a ton of, as long as you're following the seam allowance of your interfacing, you should be fine. Like if your interfacing is cut to the correct size and your seam allowances have to change a little bit, it would be okay. probably not something I should say, but it's true for the most part. <laughs> Alright, so all of those are going to need interfacing, so I'm just going to set those aside for now. Okay, four by two times two. No, times four, sorry. And if you have a domestic machine, this is a wonderful place to use the accessory weight vinyls that I have on my website because they're not going to add a ton of bulk to your top stitch etc. Okay, and then all of those are going to need some interfacing as well. And then there's the main panel slip pocket, and you can have up to two or as little as zero. Um, so this is that main panel slip pocket. I am going to go ahead and have two of those. So I'll need to cut two pieces that are five by eight. And then you'll see that your lining is not listed on that cut chart, it's on another cut chart, but you do need lining for those pieces. And then, funnily enough, your bottom panel is actually that same size. So we'll go ahead and cut that out while we're here too. Dang, I thought that seemed small. Those are the wrong size. <laughs> Come on, Lauren, didn't you design this ruler? It's okay. There is our accurately sized piece. <laughs> Ooh, I bet, I don't know. I don't want to see any of that on the outside. I do, but I don't. I do, but I don't. So we'll cut that out down here.
And then this does not need any interfacing. It just needs a matching lining piece. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll move on. Five by eight, we got our main slip and our bottom. Lower side panel pattern piece. Okay. So this one clearly says interfacing, so we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna grab our exterior and exterior. I'm just kind of making sure that I'm going to have enough vinyl. Had I not messed up those other pieces, I think I would. I can do this up here. Yeah, we're good. This is actually, um, I'm teaching a mystery class at So Magical Expo in Florida this year. It has already passed, um, but this is the bag I'm teaching. And I just thought it would be so much fun to introduce a brand new pattern to a bunch of unsuspecting people. So they get first access to it. And this piece does get interfacing, so I'm going to lay that on my heat press. Like I mentioned before, you could choose to interface your bag with foam or um, Decaville Heavy, not Decaville Heavy, a Decaville Light or Sofuse Plus. My preference has been Sofuse Plus. I think it gives really nice structure without adding a lot of bulk or weight. Um, so that is my choice, but other interfacings would still work as well. Foam would give it a really nice padded structure. Okay, so I do still need this for my lining, so I'm going to go ahead and set this in my lining pile, but I can cut off, I can mark off that I've got my lower main panel exteriors cut. And then we'll do the lower side panels. Looks like I can get one here and one there. And then I did it. Great. Um, I will have templates available for this bag from that template shop as well as off the wall quilt. And I can't wait. <laughs> Templates make this so much faster. And now because of the method or the interior option I'm doing, I, I don't need that piece again. So I'm just going to set it in that pile. This will need interface. So I'm going to set it on my heat press. <laughs> okay, but I do need two of them. So that would be helpful.
Now I don't need it. And that's my lower side panel. So zipper overlay is gonna be the last thing I need to cut out. And so as you kind of go through your pile, you've got your lower side panels, upper side panels, upper main panel, lower main panels, and then your bottom panel. And then you've got two upper pa panels and two upper side panels that go in your lining, but those go for either lining options. And then literally all of these pieces are going to get interfaced unless you want like a super slouchy bag, then you could omit the interfacing, I guess. I'm gonna cut my zipper overlay out super quick. I know I grabbed, oh, you mean this ruler? All right, so this is going to be a two inch by nine inch rectangle. There is a pattern piece for this. And then we're going to measure three quarters of an inch from either, from all sides. But what I do is I'll just measure three quarters of an inch from the short ends and then Take my rotary cutter at three quarters of an inch from the sides. And like, I do have template pieces for this, but I've gotten really good, well, I think I've gotten really good at cutting this out. You just wanna make sure you've got nice, sharp scissors snip to meet that line and then across that. Okay. And then you can take a lighter or edge coat the cutout. This does not get interfaced. This is going to go with our lining. So I'm just going to set it within the bucket. And then this was it for my scrap. That's it. Super overlay. So that's it for exterior pieces. I'm going to jump to my interior style two to see what else I need to cut for that. Okay, the recessed zipper panel, it says lining, but you could choose to cut it out of your exterior, of course. And I think I might, I don't know that I have enough of this because of those, but I can grab another roll really quick. I just think it would look really nice, very professional to just have that. I will use the lining for the other side of the zipper panel. So that's going to be 13. 13 by 5? Two, oh. Okay, 13 by 2.25. Um, there is an interfacing option for this zipper panel. If you feel like the fabric you've picked is a little flimsy or isn't quite structured enough, you could absolutely choose to use that. I did include pretty much all of the rectangular pattern pieces in case you are somebody that doesn't have a lot of skill using rulers, etc. So that is there for you. 
Okay, so that was our recessed zipper panel exterior. And now I'm gonna put this in my lining pile because I need my lining out of that. So now we can go ahead and cut out interfacing for the exterior. All right, I've got my stabilizer for my bottom panel. So four by seven. So I need one of these for my exterior. And then I know I'm gonna need a piece that's two by seven for my divider panel bottom. So I can go ahead and cut this in half. Oh wait, what are you? Oh, you're two inches. Perfect. It's a great little use of scrap Decaville Heavy. And I do recommend Decaville Heavy for this. It gives a really nice structure to the bag. If you do not have Decaville Heavy, you could layer up um, two layers of something else or anything that you prefer that will add quite a bit of structure. So now I'm going to grab my Sofuse Plus. If you've never used Sofuse Plus, I'd, I highly recommend it. It's so nice to use. Lower side panel interfacing, lower main panel interfacing. Let's see what else we need. Divider pocket interfacing. I'm going to use foam for that. Divider center. So that should be it for pieces. Otherwise, they are just cut sizes. In my head, I'm like, should I use foam on the side panel, like the lower side panel for the interfacing? Give it a nice, like, squish to it or not it's it's a struggle people always ask not people always ask sometimes people ask me what I should interface my bag with and it really is like my brain just thinks of all the literal possibilities and like there is no absolute wrong way I think it all just depends on what you want your final bag to feel like. Okay. So there's one of those. I'm even thinking like, do I want to free motion quilt the exterior of this bag? That would look really nice. But if I do that, then I definitely want foam on these panels as well. Could be a fun way to test it. So that was my lower main panel interfacing. I'm not going to need this on my lining. If you would like your lining to be super structured, you could add that. You just want to make sure that you cut away at your zipper pocket. Okay. So now we need lower side panel interfacing. 
I'm gonna need two of these pieces. This does not need to be mirrored, but if you're doing the, wait, did I say lining? Lower side panel interfacing. For your lining side panel interfacing, if you're doing the divider, you will need to mirror those pieces. I would say that that is the hardest part of this bag is the divider, but if you take it slow, once you've done it, you're, you're going to be like, oh, that was pretty cool. I hope. I thought it was pretty cool when I did it. I felt like a real genius. <laughs> So I only needed those two. I can set this aside now. I'll go ahead and check back with my cut list for the exterior option one. And the lower main panel interfacing, I cut the two. Lower side panel interfacing, I cut the two. I also cut my one stabilizer. So now I've got a total of eight pieces left and that is for my upper main panel and my upper side panel. And those are measurements given. And I'm going to look at my scrap for those because they're like one inch wide pieces. I know I've got scrap. Like, look at whatever this is. Beautiful. that are 13 by 1. that and then one by three for those other little pieces Okay, there are those four pieces. Okay, so that is it for the exterior options that I needed to cut. So while my heat press is still warming up, I'll go ahead and work on my interior pieces. just did foam on the side panels. I don't know. Don't do it. It'll be fine. It'll look great. All right. So interior option two. Interior style two. For the pattern pieces, I need the lower main panel. Got it. 
divider lower side panel, divider lower side panel interfacing, divider center pocket, right here, um, divider center pocket interfacing, and a typo. Okay. And then the other is just measurements given. I'm going to talk about the divider center pocket for a second. It says four lining, but I'm going to ask that you kind of use your best judgment on this one because four pieces of this Theratex or even a waterproof canvas would be really bulky. So you may want to choose a sub lining for the lining of that. Um, so I'm actually going to just cut out two from this Theratex. And then the others out of a coordinating color that's going to line that. Um, and the divider center pocket is big enough to fit the smaller MacBook. Um, it's about 13 inches wide. So keep that in mind. This is not going to get, no, it will be interface. That's right. I'm fine. It's fine. Like I said, I'm going to end up using a sub lining for the rest of this pocket. And we will be fusing our foam to it. If you didn't want to fuse it, you could quilt it to compress the foam. Oh, that would be so cute. I might do it. It'd be so cute. So I'm going to set this in a pile over here as well as this work on that in a little bit. Divider, interfacing, interfacing. Okay. So I know that I need two lower panels cut out of this. I'm trying to think. So the one I already made, I used that for the lining. And yeah, I feel like it has a good enough structure. Like it's slippy, but nice. So I'm not going to interface it. I was debating like, do I want to add some a little light interfacing to it? But I, I don't, I'm good. That doesn't get interfaced, so we're just going to set it in our pile. If 
If you did not want to cut this on the fold, you could print out this pattern piece section twice and tape them all together. And my heat press is actually at the desired temperature now. So I'll clip these together. I'll cut out divider lower side panels super quick and then start to interface. Alright, I've got my main divider, lower side panel, divider, lower, lower main panel, top thing. All right, I do have my slip pockets that need their lining counterparts, so I'll cut those out super quick. And these are going to get clipped on the top and the bottom. We're going to be sewing these together at a quarter inch seam allowance. Set that aside. If you want this pocket to have structure, like maybe you're using quilting cotton for both, it wouldn't hurt to cut um, a little bit of interfacing for it, just smaller than the piece itself is. Okay. Three by eight times two of the divider bottom panel. I'll just cut that out because it's the same height and it's going to need to be interfaced and I'm about to move on to interfacing anyway. And these get those little pieces of Jacobville Heavy we cut out a little bit ago. zipper pocket eight by nine so I know that this was eight high so I'm going to cut nine over and move this up to eight finish off that cut come over turn this and come over And then for the next one, if you don't want to measure, you don't have to, you can just cut around your other one. And then to keep all of this together, I usually clip it with my overlay. together with my lining. Zipper pocket. 
for the cargo slip pocket, depending on what you're using for your lining, you may want to make that a sub lining piece as well because it is a big chunk. So keep that in mind. All right. Divider lower side panel. My trick to cutting these, because you are going to need four pieces, two sets that are mirrored, is I'm going to lay this fabric right sides together, lay this piece over top, These do need to be mirrored. One side of this pattern piece is completely straight. If you need to, you can mark which side is the straight side with a marking pen or something. So when I open these up, these are mirror images of each other this is my straight side and this is my straight side so we can mark with a little arrow if that helps and then we're just going to do that same thing again where we'll fold the fabric on itself right sides together or wrong sides together it does not matter And again, you can open that up. Here is my straight side. And then here is my straight side. So you should have, when you lay these down, two mirror images of each other. And now to finish off what we need for that divider gusset, we'll cut our bottom panel pieces over here, which are three by eight. And then if your print is directional, just keep in mind whichever way you'd want it to go. Okay. 
So that is that. We have our divider lower side panels, two and two. We've got our bottom panels cut. So now I just need to finish off my recessed zipper pocket panel as well as the cargo slip pocket, figure out what I'm doing for that. I don't believe that I'm going to interface this fabric for the panel. I think if I were doing two layers of it, I would, but I think just one, it's going to be totally fine, especially with my vinyl on the exterior. But just know that if you want your zipper to be super structured, you could absolutely add that interfacing. And then I'll clip these together. <laughs> Cargo slip pocket. Man, oh man. I could also line this. You could choose to cut out two that are 17 by 9 to put together and flip. Or you can cut it as one big piece and fold it in half. Oh yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna think about it while I interface. I'm thinking I'm gonna end up piecing that together with a sublining. Anyway, I'm gonna start interfacing. These are the divider lower bottom panels. Oh, I'd already cut them. Hilarious. I wondered why it was crossed off. So I'll go ahead and interface those and then I'll grab my bottom panel exterior and do that one too. These will use up as much space as possible. Oh, that was probably really loud. Ah, oh, I didn't cut out that. What, did I put the interfacing away too? Yikes. That's the level of cleaning up I like to do, I guess. It's just so good when it's interface. Like, I can't even explain how much I love it. It does, like... I'm not sure if you can see... Yeah, there it is. Like, the, cre the wrinkles. But it's actually really satisfying to touch, so I don't care. Try not to do it while it's still hot, though. Because, yeah but I'm sorry, it's just satisfying. <laughs> all right, we'll do all of our upper panels. So there's four each. I really do recommend using an accessory weight or mid-weight vinyl for this so it's not too bulky on your seams and that's one of the main reasons we've got interfacing on all of those pieces is so you don't have to have a super structured vinyl to have the top of your bag feel super structured. For the um, exterior option two, there is interfacing for each of those panels instead of just the big lower main panel interfacing. 
that way again it has that same like very structured feeling to it so here's all those pieces go ahead and do lower lining we just want to make sure that it is as centered as possible about half an inch from all edges Just like the lining lower panel for the divider option, those pieces had to be mirrored. Your interfacing also has to be mirrored. And you really don't want this to be on the entire piece or your seams are gonna be super bulky. So that's why I recommend the way to do it. But we can cut through this interfacing four layers at a time. Just saying. It's not going to be like super accurate when you do this, but it does save a lot of time. So it's up to you if you'd want to do it this way or not. So I've got all those sides cut and now I'm just going to go along the outermost edge. Bada boom. And you should be able to tell which side is that straight side and which side is angled. And then we'll just press all these into place. This is your lining only. This is not your exterior. The exterior should be cut as one full piece so we'll interface that now I'm to the last pieces that I'm going to cut and that is not part of the pattern but I'm going to explain it in the video is a sub lining or a secondary lining and that is a cheaper lining than what I'm already using so for that cargo slip pocket the pattern piece needs to be 9 by 17 for a non-fraying fabric. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that nine by 17 out of two fabrics that do fray and put them right sides together to sew along the top. So there's that one and then the other is the inside of that cargo or the divider pocket. So this takes up almost a whole yard of fabric for the lining, but it's worth it. It's beautiful. There's that. Done with these rulers, so I'll put them away. And then I need my foam. to interface the divider pocket. So I decided to go with this like really muted purple. I think it's pretty. It doesn't clash with the green exterior and like it's in the lining. It's just like a toned down. So I think it'll be nice. So 
So we'll get 17 by 9. And then I'll clip these right sides together along the top edge. And we'll end up sewing these together with a quarter inch seam allowance, pressing open, top stitching, and then our instructions will be the same. So that's my cargo. I did do my interfacing. Do that. Done with the ruler. Okay. Interfacing. So I'm going to be a little lazy and just rough cut these because we're going to end up basting all these layers together. So as long as they're close enough, I'm going to be trimming down any excess anyway. Okay. So then these are going to get interfaced with our foam. I'm just going to press all these pieces super quick get rid of any wrinkles. Fold this back up. I have found that I cannot cut through a fold, folded over foam with a 45 millimeter rotary. I might be able to with a 60, so I'm just marking out my center line and cutting around. And then for fleece, you do need to steam or use a little bit of water to get that to fuse. So just keep that in mind. There we go. If you're not sure you want to go with foam, maybe you want to go with fleece, um, hold your layers together. Like, how does that feel? Does it feel like it's too squishy? The interfacing is out of the seam allowances, so it should be fine. But I do think I'm going to quilt these pieces just to help compress that foam a little bit more so it doesn't take up as much room within the lining. And that foam is, like three quarters of an inch smaller, like most of the way around, and it should not be within the top stitching of your zipper panel. It should like just get it on the final top stitch. So you can see there, and then I can use a marking pen or just kind of free motion. Maybe I'll like go around the mix tapes or something. Um, but that is it. We have interfaced this bag completely for 
interior option style two and exterior style one. So just to kind of reiterate, we've got our divider pocket. Put that together. That does need um, a zipper pull cut to 20 inches with two pulls. No, 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 no. Oh, I need to add hardware needed to this. Needed. Cut 20, cut to 20. Um, so this would be a zipper cut to 15 inches with two poles. So there's the divider pocket. This is our cargo pocket. These are our, our four divider side panels, two divider bottom panels, and then two side panels that go on the inside, two top panels that go on the inside, and then we have our zipper panel. So that is our lining complete. And then we have our two exterior main panels, exterior lower side panel, bottom. These are exterior upper side panels, upper main panels, our slip pockets. Oh, can't forget interior zipper pocket, interior main panels, and then all of our webbing. So I realize that's a lot, but hopefully the pattern is clear and concise enough for you to go, I got this, because you got this. Um, if not, send me an email, see what I can do. But I'm very excited to make this with you, and I hope you are too. Bye.